Earthquakes are one of the most devastating natural disasters, causing widespread destruction and loss of life. Certain regions of the world are more prone to earthquakes due to their location on tectonic plate boundaries, and Vancouver, Canada, is one such region. Situated near the Cascadia subduction zone, Vancouver is at constant risk of seismic activity. Recently, a big earthquake struck off the coast of Vancouver Island, serving as a reminder of the region's vulnerability. Although this earthquake caused no damage, it has once again raised concerns about the potential for a major seismic event known as the Big One. The Big One refers to a catastrophic megathrust earthquake, likely exceeding magnitude 9.0 that could strike the Pacific Northwest. Scientific studies suggest that such an event is inevitable, given the seismic history of the region, and when it occurs, the damage could be unprecedented. Today, let's delve into the recent earthquake in Vancouver and discuss the threat of the big one. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. On the 21st of February, a magnitude 4.7 earthquake struck the Sunshine Coast, causing noticeable shaking across Metro Vancouver. Then again, on the 24th of February, a magnitude 5.3 earthquake struck Vancouver. According to Earthquakes Canada, the epicenter of this quake was located approximately 182 kilometers west of Port Alice, Vancouver Island, at a depth of 10 kilometers. The Vancouver region experiences earthquakes due to its location near the Cascadia subduction zone. This is where the Juan de Fuca plate is gradually being pushed beneath the North American plate. As these plates interact, stress builds up along the boundary until it is released in the form of an earthquake. The recent earthquakes were likely a result of crustal stress release within the Juan de Fuca plate or along one of its associated fault lines. Since the second earthquake's epicenter was far offshore, most residents of Vancouver and nearby cities did not feel significant shaking. There were no reports of major damage, and authorities did not issue any tsunami warnings. Such earthquakes are not uncommon, as the region experiences hundreds of small tremors each year. However, the concern remains that these moderate earthquakes could be foreshocks leading up to a much larger seismic event. Vancouver and the surrounding Pacific Northwest have a long and deadly history of earthquakes, with some of the most powerful seismic events occurring along the Cascadia subduction zone. The most infamous of these was the megathrust earthquake of January 26, 1700, which scientists estimate had a magnitude of 9.0. This cataclysmic event caused violent shaking, triggered massive landslides, and generated a tsunami that traveled across the Pacific, devastating coastal Japan. Evidence of this ancient disaster is found in drowned forests, buried coastal villages, and centuries-old tsunami records from Japan. Indigenous oral histories also recount stories of entire villages being wiped out by powerful waves. Geological research shows that Cascadia megathrust earthquakes occur every 300 to 500 years, meaning the region is now overdue for another massive quake. More recently, several moderate earthquakes have shaken Vancouver, including the 1946 Vancouver Island earthquake of magnitude 7.3 and the 2001 Nisqually earthquake of magnitude 6.8. These quakes, while not catastrophic, serve as warning signs of the immense pressure building beneath the region. The historical record is clear. Another major earthquake is inevitable, and the consequences could be far worse than anything seen before. Located approximately 100 miles off the Pacific Northwest coast, the Cascadia subduction zone spans about 620 miles from the northern reaches of California through Oregon and Washington, and ending off the coast of Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Theoretically, the significant seismic event known as the Big One could occur anywhere along this fault line. Seismologists predict that this earthquake could exceed magnitude 9.0 and cause widespread destruction across British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, and Northern California. The Cascadia subduction zone marks the boundary where the Juan de Fuca plate is being subducted beneath the North American plate. This process of subduction has been ongoing for millions of years, building up immense tectonic stress. 
The geological mechanics of the Cascadia subduction zone are uniquely suited to produce catastrophic earthquakes. Unlike strike-slip faults such as the San Andreas Fault, which primarily involve horizontal movement, subduction zones involve one tectonic plate sliding beneath another. This vertical movement creates the potential for massive displacements of the seafloor, which in turn generate tsunamis. The Cascadia subduction zone is divided into several segments, each capable of rupturing independently or in combination. A full rupture of the entire fault line would release immense energy, likely resulting in one of the largest earthquakes ever recorded. Modern seismic studies have significantly enhanced our understanding of the threats associated with the Cascadia subduction zone. Technological breakthroughs such as GPS tracking, deep-sea seismometers, and paleo-seismic analysis have enabled scientists to examine the region's tectonic behavior with unparalleled accuracy. Research indicates that rather than continuously shifting, the subduction zone remains locked, gradually accumulating stress over hundreds of years. This buildup of strain is what creates the danger of a sudden, devastating earthquake. Additionally, scientists have observed slow-slip events, where tectonic plates move gradually over days or weeks without producing major tremors. While these events help release some tension, they are insufficient to prevent a massive rupture. Some experts even suggest that slow slip movements may play a role in triggering megathrust earthquakes by subtly redistributing stress along the fault line. These findings reinforce the inevitability of a major seismic event, making continued monitoring and preparedness crucial for communities in the Pacific Northwest. A Cascadia megathrust earthquake would unleash catastrophic destruction across the Pacific Northwest, shaking the region with unrelenting force. The tremors could persist for several minutes, far longer than most people have ever experienced. Buildings and infrastructure not engineered to endure prolonged seismic activity would likely crumble, leading to mass casualties and immense devastation. Skyscrapers in Seattle, Portland, and Vancouver could violently sway, with some experiencing partial or total collapse. One of the most immediate and deadly consequences of such an earthquake would be the tsunami it triggers. Within minutes, a towering wall of water could surge toward the shore at speeds exceeding 500 miles per hour, devastating coastal communities like Cannon Beach, Newport, and Crescent City. The floodwaters could push miles inland, obliterating homes, infrastructure, and entire neighborhoods. Limited warning time would leave many with little opportunity to escape. Beyond the initial destruction, the long-term fallout would be staggering. Highways, bridges, and rail networks would suffer widespread damage, paralyzing transportation and emergency response efforts. Ports and airports, vital for trade and disaster relief, could be left inoperable. With power grids, water supplies, and communication systems heavily compromised, millions could be left without essential services. The economic toll is projected to surpass hundreds of billions of dollars, with full recovery taking decades. After the seismic activity subsides and the tsunami withdraws, the extent of the devastation in the region will become evident. Coastal communities will essentially cease to exist, and major cities, particularly Portland and Seattle, will be obliterated. Projections indicate that it will take anywhere from one to three months after the earthquake to restore electricity, a month to a year for the re-establishment of drinking water and sewer services, six months to a year for the restoration of major highways, and 18 months to bring back healthcare facilities. The entire Pacific Northwest region will undergo a profound transformation after the significant earthquake, and while the federal government is likely to cover the entire reconstruction expenses, the economic damage to the Pacific Northwest will necessitate a generation to rebuild. A substantial portion of the population will likely relocate and never return. Major corporations and businesses will likely relocate to other parts of the country and may never return. The Cascadia megathrust earthquake is not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. The geological forces at play along this fault line have been accumulating energy for centuries, 
inevitably leading to a powerful and destructive event. When that moment arrives, the Pacific Northwest will be faced with an immense challenge, putting its communities, infrastructure, and governments to the test. However, there is a bright side. The region still has time to prepare. In fact, it could have a century or more to get ready. Although the potential devastation may seem daunting, proactive steps can lessen the impact and save lives. Strengthening seismic resilience, improving emergency preparedness, and educating the public are crucial to minimizing risks. Action cannot wait. Postponing preparations for the Cascadia earthquake endangers millions and threatens the stability of one of North America's most thriving and dynamic regions. By recognizing the danger and taking bold steps now, the Pacific Northwest can face this inevitable disaster with strength and readiness, securing a safer future for generations to come.